So now you've been back in Brazil for two years, two and a half years, three years. How, how long has it been? Um, two years and a few months. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what have you been up to? Well, I've, I've just got a job a few months after I returned. Well done. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Actually, I started the process while I was still in Australia. Mm -hmm. So I started the interviews over there. And then when I returned, they just made the offer. Mm -hmm. So it's been crazy because I've been like a month in the office. And then we all went back to working from home. Wow. Interesting. So what is this yeah. job? What do you do? I'm a, a market risk manager. So what I do is I, I assess risks related to market prices, volatility, and uh, basically that and how the, the and exposures the desks are taken. Uh, mm -hmm. I work in commodities, so with commodities. So uh, basically the exposures, you know, purchases and sales for beans, meal, oil, uh, corn, wheat. And how these markets are evolving, and and how what's affecting the prices, and how could that harm the PNL? And that's basically like a very brief overview of the work. Interesting. Okay, let's let's start from the beginning. How did you how did you get into this industry? I started as an intern, uh, mm -hmm. well while I was still in college, and then I actually didn't have any idea of what's going to be. And then I just passed on this process, this internship process. And then I have never left. I mean, it's been my whole career built over, you know, over commodities and, and being, you know, following up this market and, and the results and, and things like that. Right. And now what, what is a commodity? That's... An interesting question because I have never thought about the concept if per se of the commodity, but I would say it's something that you can trade uh, worldwide that has, a, I mean, the same, it's not, it's, it's, it's very much the same everywhere that you go. Uh, they have some specificities like the quality of the, the good, but overall it's basically the same everywhere. Interesting. It's not something that it's very, uh, that you add a lot of value. In the, in the chain, you know, it's just basically the, the basics. So like the, the raw you, material, basically. Yeah, the raw material, like you think of, of, you know, ore or crude oil, you know, the basics from which you are going to develop other materials and then aggregate value down the road. Interesting, interesting. Okay, so you predominantly work with then primary resources, so crude, crude petrol or let's say wheat, for example, which has just been harvested, those kind of things. Interesting. So in your particular role, you look at uh, the overall market. Is that the global market, the local market? It's a bit of everything. Uh, because, I mean, one of the main drivers of prices around is the, the exchange prices from Chicago. Basically, if you're talking about wheat or oil or uh, soybeans, then it's basically CBOT, Chicago Board of Trade. And then we have to look at, you know, the factors globally that affects prices there. So it's, it's, it's more related to U.S. market, but of course, if we are talking about the global demand, then impacts in other regions are also going to affect the prices there. For instance, now we are having troubles with the weather in South America, and then this is one of the drivers for the prices in, in the CBOT, in the, in the exchange room. Interesting, interesting. So why Chicago? Why, why are the prices decided there? Well, that's something that goes like way back in time. I'm not 100% familiar with the history, but um, I would say that's where it first started. Uh, when we started having these first, you know, structured uh, places to do this, those, this kind of trades. And then it became a reference for the rest of the world. Right. Okay. So once the price is decided in Chicago, roughly, if you look at like global trade and everyone goes, this is the set price. Uh, that we're going to follow? Is, is that how it works? This is part of the final price because right. we have other factors like uh, the, the locations. So we have the premiums for those locations because then it, we have to take this, uh, this product from a place to the other. So there's these different differences in prices and also freight. Uh -huh. and we have to ship it for, you know, uh, the main destinations, which will be maybe China or depending on the, the product we're talking, we have Europe as well. And then there's this kind of thing that also affects the final price. 
So in the sure. end, we kind of look about a little bit of everything because it's all affecting the final result for the company.